Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here and today is Watercolor Tuesday and we're going to do a little bit of a different take on today. I'm going to actually show you my process of finding ideas on how to draw your own fairies and then we'll paint one up. Now I'm not going to do a full figured one, we'll just work on the face for today, but I thought you might I know I've gotten a few people wanting to know how I do this. So I'll show you my um, watercolor book so far. Um, last month we did the fairies. And what I've done, these are the um, photocopies because I did them on watercolor paper. So I still have my watercolor painting and I could frame these or whatever. But I thought I, just to keep a record, I would print them out on my scanner and um, size them down. And that way I can have them in this book also. And that's what we did last week, was the fall leaves by tracing around at an actual leaf and then painting them. Oh, my chat, just a minute. Hey Devin, Brenda, good to see you. So I thought we could do one in here. Um, now, my process of finding a character to draw or something um, comes from a lot of different things put together. So like everybody out there, we all get inspired by other artists. So I have um, quite a few different books here. These are all on fairies. And I look at them and I think, you know, how did they, what was their design based on? So this one here is based on bugs. So they've actually taken a number of different parts of a bug and incorporated it into a full fairy, whatever it is. <laughs> so he's still got kind of a human face, but he's got like a dragonfly wings and he's got a beetle body. So you have to kind of think outside the box. Hey Kathleen, good to see you. Uh, this one's really cute. So bug legs. So um, looks like a leaf. Oh no, it's probably a butterfly wings. Part of a bug body, and then he's used. Um, looks like a uh, the outer shell of a pod of some sort that he's used as a helmet. So. To get some ideas on, on um, uh, how to think outside the box, I guess you could say. Hey, Lena. Lena, I loved your, your painting you did. It was awesome. Be sure to go check out Lena's channel. She did a fantastic um, Karen Dosh. Um, they're the hard pastels and did some uh, portraits. They were really great. Awesome, I loved it. Um, you'll probably find that uh, the pan pastels will be better for you, not as much rubbing and stuff like that, and less pigment to blow off or get rid of a, on your paper. Um, and the colored pencil, because it's, they're so pigmented, the colored pencil um, is still able to go on it if that's what you're wanting to use. Um, yeah, I've got tons of books. Um, I love characters. Uh, I like learning about facial expressions, that type of thing. I love portraits. So, um, anything like these here, you just look at them and figure out how they're coming about finding their creatures. Now, there is a uh, this artist here, she does have a YouTube channel, Iris Compet, Compet, I think it is her last name, 
And uh, she has a really interesting uh, YouTube on how she develops her characters. And her characters all come out on the paper. You know how we will pull it, we'll paint, paint blobs or whatever on, and then we'll see faces in those things or scribbles. And we see faces. And that's how she does it. And uh, um, I guess I've been doing that <laughs> for a long time too, but I didn't realize you could do it with a scribble of a pencil too. Um, I don't know if I've got, yeah, like these here. These were um, watercolor with um, different things laying on it so it made marks into the watercolor. And then I found a face in it and I found her hair in it. So these are the things you can do too. Um, now with me on this one, I was thinking more realistic, not creature oriented. So it depends on your frame of mind too and what you're going to see. So if you are looking for more of a creature kind of thing, you'll see different things in your um, blobs of watercolor or, or whatever uh, is in there. Um, I've got, uh, I don't know where I put it. Uh, I had another watercolor I think I did it last month where we did a bunch of creatures in the watercolor. Um, I'll link it below later and uh, you can watch that YouTube. So these are how she does hers. She actually scribbles um, a small scribble and then looks for eyes, nose, head, that type of thing. Sometimes you only see an eye and then you develop off of that. And it could be any size, really. Um, another thing that I use, and I've used these for a long time, are these uh, facial expressions, a visual reference for artists. These are great books if you're looking for an expression. So a lot of people kind of shy away from them because they're not sure how to do a certain expression. And that's why you see a lot of, of, um, of the uh, artists that are doing the face on, um, what do you call them, imaginary. They're not like from a reference, they're kind of their own um, invention of a girl. And they're usually face on, very, very rarely do you see them three quarter side profile, that type of thing, or up or down. And that's usually because they are a little bit difficult to draw properly without having a, re a reference. So these books will give you um, age and um, male or female and different hairstyles, and they ha all have different expressions. There's up, um, side profiles, down profiles. So whatever you're thinking of putting in your paper, you can look through this book and find the right profile that you would work in your drawing. And that's why these are so girl. Yes, whimsical girls. I was trying to find the right name for that. Thanks, Devin. Um, so with these, I, I love these because there's so many, and then they give you a little, um, side drawings of what people have done with these pictures. And so they can be used for cartoons. They can be used for digital art. Um, so many different ways of using these. So you don't have to draw these to look exactly like her. This is how you do your characters. You exaggerate certain parts of her facial features. So like the big chin. She may not have a big chin or the nose uh, make it a little bigger but it gives you the start of um, your character drawing. Um, 
there's many, 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 many different ages. Like it gets into really old. Um, this one, this one is fantastic for. She's got a million wrinkles, but her facial expressions are awesome. So you don't have to put the wrinkles in if you don't want to. But I just like the um, facial expressions. And sometimes, um, like here, they've used these. So this is what that face looks like to these people that uh, drew these characters. So you can kind of see her in these. <laughs> it's really interesting. And there's also a child's one. And this is great too because this goes up to 17 or 18 years old from infant. And different um, muscle structure when a child, different formation um, eyes, nose, and mouth are a little closer together instead of more of a round appearance to the face usually. Um, so these are fantastic books to get and um, use as a reference. <laughs> yeah, I know, I Devin? <laughs> they actually give the name of the person on these too. It's funny. So what I do is I usually uh, start with a base of um, maybe I have a thought of um, a storyline and I'll take from that storyline how I want my character to look and then I find my my um, reference of the expression that will be on you you can start off with just doing a simple face, like with no expression, just to get started. I recommend you doing that. And then when you get comfortable and more confident in your drawing uh, abilities, then branch out to more expressions. They are a little harder, but I find that when you add an expression to your drawings, it gives the drawing a story. And that's what you want in your your um, artwork. You want to tell a story or give um, a feeling of a story to whoever's looking at it. This way the person becomes more um, involved in the painting and it personalizes the picture or whatever you're doing. It, it personalizes it to them because it tells them their story. So that's why I like putting uh, either an emotion on a face or if it's a figure then instead of having it just um, standing still you'll have uh, the body showing some kind of attitude like it's happy, it's sad, and there's ways the body stands, even if it's standing straight, that will represent those feelings that person is having. So this all goes into um, your drawing of a person. So <laughs> to make a fairy, you have to go another step out of the box. And this is when you have fun, for me anyways. Um, so as you know, I've been doing nature-based fairies and nature as far as flowers and that type of thing. Um, <laughs> Janet, hi Janet. <laughs> so I thought it would be kind of cool to do a rosebud, or not a rosebud, a, a rose hip. So this is a rose hip from my garden. This is from one of my David Austin roses. And here's another rose hip. And this is from these tiny little, um, what they call pavement rose. And these got red really quick. Uh, I really like them though, they're really pretty. And as you know, you can make tea out of rose hips and stuff. So I, I thought, um, being a fairy, let's make 
a rose hip as a head. So I'm going to think outside the box. So this is going to, I haven't drawn this before, so this is all going to be, <laughs> I'm going to wing it. So we'll, I have no promises here. <laughs> it's going to be whatever it turns out to be. I never really plan it from beginning to end. I start off with the idea and it kind of grows as I draw. And that's what I like to do. I need to step up. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, so, I love the, the uh, pink color of these. Now, what we can do is draw the rose hip um, branch here. And then I'm going to just take one of these heads and I'm going to put it, uh, enlarge it here. So this is going to be my... Um, fairy head basically. So I can bring it in a little bit so anyone that wants to draw along with me they can. So I'm just going to look in my monitor so I'll draw what I see and it's the same thing that you will be seeing. So we have a nice stem. I'm not going to draw the whole thing because um, I want to get the fairy done. But I just want to put in this, let's see. And this is just a reference too. Remember, you don't have to put in it in exactly. It's just a reference. Okay, so my rose hips will be here. So I'm just using one of these um, mechanical pencils. Nothing fancy. Hard to seeing. I, I'm only getting a little wee <laughs> picture. So it might not be the same, but my best. one up here. And actually this one comes over here instead. A little bit taller, little fuzzies on the top. Uh, so just to get a base of where this is, and then this here is my leaf. So I do have a leaf crossing this here and it's folded. 
and then you take an eraser so we won't see those lines there so it's not you know it's just just do your best and then you can clean it up after but you just want to kind of more or less shapes um, when you're first doing it. And this here crosses over there. And this crosses there actually. This is a big leaf. This one crosses over there. Might not be the same, but it's close enough for me. Don't have to do them exact. And this is just sketchbook paper that I'm using. So that one was, let me see. Fold it there, like that. And there is this one. Comes out of here. And this crosses over. And so just get your shapes put in. And then there's this one. And there's one underneath it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now for this here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. So let's take this one here. I'm going to look at it. I think uh, we could do it like that. So I want, this is going to be the head of the, of the fairy. So depending on which side you want, I think I'm going to do, hmm, maybe like that. So if you want to take a um, screenshot of that, you can do that. So I'm going to just hold this and I want, the shape of this to go on here. The best you can, because we can change it up and then we have these And I'm going to have these out a little bit different because I, I don't have enough room on both sides. So a little tough there. A little bit of foreshortening. A 
and this is going to, like I said, you use these as a reference. They don't necessarily have to be um, the exact. You can make them exact, but they don't have to be. Okay, so there's the basis of my head. Hey, Dee Dee. Glad to see you here. Joan, everybody, good to see you. All right. So now, what kind of expression do we want? So I did look through my book here, and I there's tons, and I, I like this guy here, <laughs> or this. So there's that one, this one here, just simple. And then there's this guy here. That one. He's look mischievous. And then there's also this girl here. Now what one was it? Um, I had this one. Pick out. I think I like the the boy. The boy. I like this one. So I think that's the one I'm going to do. This one here. He looks mischievous. <laughs> so we're going to play with this and I'm the reference for this I'm using as the expression. So not not necessarily the exact um, shapes of everything, but the expression is what I'm looking at. So you don't have to draw exactly what you're seeing in a character design because you want to um, emphasize certain um, parts of his face. Like maybe I'll make the eyes bigger, maybe the nose longer. I could make a wider mouth, even wider. Usually look at the um, person's face and you see what's the most prevalent thing about his face. So I would say his mouth on here and his cheeks. So he's got cute little um, big cheeks up here and he's got a fairly wide mouth. So you can emphasize that by making it even bigger or making the things around it smaller. Oh, are you guys getting choppy video? Yours is fine, Janet? Hmm. I don't know. says I have an excellent con uh, connection here, so it must be on your end, guys. All right. Well, hopefully um, the recording will be good if you can't stay. It's bothering you too much. All right, so the way I like to start is I want to, so we have a center line here. So this is where his uh, mid face will be because he's, he has turned slightly. Um, so we could actually make it a little bit. He, and he is on a little bit of a tilt. So you're seeing this side of his ear. You can notice if their their face is turned a little bit more than the one side to the other by the ear. So you can see only part of the ear here, which is um, just off center, just slightly. Um, 
and the eyes if you notice the eyes are always well not always but most of the time measured from the top of the head to the top of the or the bottom of the chin is usually about halfway in this section so from here to here it'd be about here so we'll put just a, a mark there and then half from here to here is usually um, about where your the bottom of your nose is so with kids it's a little different because they're usually their eyes nose and mouth are closer together so uh, he looks like he's got a little bit of a chin here so that's good for this so I think I'm just going to put his little nose right here and then his uh, mouth is going to be right here. So I'm going to give him a fair amount of chin. And then uh, his eyes, um, usually realistically, if you want to keep it realistic, there's usually a one eye width in between your eyes so being that this is going to be a character it doesn't have to be that way so um, we can put further apart but I still want that um, squint because that's part of his character so you'll notice different muscles in his um, cheeks is what you need to look at also that gives you the character of a smile, a frown, a pout, whatever. Uh, he's got a little nose, so um, the nose isn't going to be too different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, little nostrils in here right now. Just to indicate, because he's got a very small nose. And we can always change up the size of his nose too. So he's got a kind of a round, a little bit of a round ball on the end of his nose. And the cheeks. He's really got that smile going on. Now, I'm going to make his a little bit bigger. Now, I can always change the shape of this, too. Uh, you don't have to keep this. If you want to give him a little more cheek, you can do that, too. So, it comes down like this. Like I said, it's only um, the starting of what this is going to look like. You keep changing it. And you might not like something, then you take it out. So it's, use your eraser. <laughs> I love my eraser. There's nothing wrong with using an eraser. Don't ever let anyone say that it's, um, it's cheating, it's not. Okay, so there's part of his, he's got a, it's just slightly curved. Just slightly and I'm gonna have it over a little more okay and if you noticed if you notice here that line comes past the corner of the mouth so you want to put that in We can change it again if you don't like it, and it goes up, and then it really emphasizes those cheeks. Okay, and there's also shadowing involved in that type of thing. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. He does have an, a little bit of a, a dimple in his chin here. And then he's got uh, a little bit of thickness in the eye. 
on the bottom part of his eyelid. And then this little little eyes there, mischievous eyes. Let's see. Make them it's kind of look at the shape. So I made them further apart. So you can see the corner of his eye a little more in this area. And it actually eyelid you actually see a little bit more too. And the eye about there. About there. There's his little, little nose here. Um, being that they're kids, you're not going to have as much um, detail, like wrinkles, that type of thing, crevices. So you're not going to notice as much. Um, bone structure. So these eyebrows goes past his eye a bit. It's always a little thicker in the center with kids. A little sparse along the just thickens up a little bit. Halfway in, I guess you could say. Kind of looks like a dog. <laughs> Can bring this down a little bit. He's got a very small nose, so let's put take this out now. We can take this out. And Bring this nose out a little bit on this side because I can see it more. And then on this side. The nose is basically um, shadows. The only part that you really notice being um, a line is like in the nostril area. And only part of that nostril area is dark, not the whole thing. bit of a ball on it. That'll be done by shading. Uh, and we're changing this because of the wider eye. Um, 
It does have a little dimple right here. I'll put the little dimples in there. You can only see a little bit of his bottom lip. out more and not as prevalent. Kind of like that. Alright. He does have a glow in his eye. more curved. This comes down more. Okay, so see it changes his looks um, by making things bigger or smaller. So we could actually put big ears on them too if you wanted to. Hey Dorothy! That's right Janet. <laughs> it's detail. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the stem small. Why not? Let's put a little Adam's apple on them. Um, so this can actually be darker. And this will be all dark in here. So we can paint that in. Um, I don't even need to put ears on them if I don't want to. It could be just left without ears. Now, if I'm looking at this, this one I picked this yesterday, so it's kind of kind of wrinkly. Usually, they're very smooth and and um, shiny. Like these ones are a little bit more. See how they're smooth. That's how they normally are. So this one kind of withered. Alright, so what do you guys think? Do you want ears on them or just leave it? It's up to you. I'm leaving it up to you. I'd give them antennas. Yeah, you could. You could put little um, antennas on his. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's see. We can uh, have Kind of droopy. Maybe that means something.
Only if you want. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Have I put any antennas? Yeah, I did put antennas on one of my guys. There. I'll bulge it out. <laughs> there we go. So let's um Take a kneadable eraser, this one's old, and soften some of those lines a little bit, and then we'll paint them up. Self-portrait. <laughs> You're funny. a little bit. It'll be dark, but just take some of it off. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So he, that's the picture we used. And that's how he turned out. <laughs> so you can see the similarity. But it's easier if you have a reference. That's why you even start collecting references from books, um, magazines, that type of thing. If you see any with some different types of expressions on the face, cut them out. Okay, where did I put my watercolor? Oh, there it is. Wouldn't that be awesome, Lena? Um, Janet's antennas would have <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> See, that gives me an idea right there. Just dream things up. You know, it doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> just, just dream some stuff up and add it to your painting when you're, or drawing. Like, you don't have to paint these up. You could just uh, use um, graphite and just draw these and then you can print them out later if you wanted to paint them up. Okay. So let's get this guy done. So I want him to stay in the greens. So we're going to keep him green. So this is a really nice, I think I'm going to have to get rid of this though. I've got no palette left. To, I know you guys are probably screaming, good paint, but sometimes you need a fresh palette. Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to. Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. I'm going to take these lines out for now. Oh, that was wet. Oh well. All right. So let's find a nice color. Um, it's kind of a. It's almost this leaf green, actually. This leaf green is 
um, Da Vinci, and that's what it's called, Leaf Green. So I'm going to make a fair amount of that up. Paper towel. So I like to kind of stay to the true colors of my um, rose hip. So it's kind of this leaf green and a tad of permanent sap green. Just a tad though. So I'm going to take some of this and mix it. And I'm going to use just clean water for now. Well, it's not clean. It's got green in it now. I'm not going to paint the eye though. I'm going to leave the eye. Actually, I'm going to paint over all of the, um, what do you call them? Some of the areas that have the uh, brackets from where the rose was. Those can be green also. I'm not really too worried about going outside the lines either. It's kind of a loose rendition. If you want to, if you really like your creature that you're doing, you can always paint them again. So I wouldn't worry too much about. This is just an experiment. So I'm not going to be too precious about if I made a mistake and it sept, seeped over something. Okay, so I left his eyes. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and it's a little bit more of this green with it. Darken it a little bit. Maybe some of the gold green too in there. Just a little dab. And I'm going to put a little smidge of red in it just to brown it up slightly. Okay. And this will be... Um, kind of the, I'm going to actually dry this first because it's paper, it's not watercolor paper. All right, so now we can add some of this darker color. So it would be in his eyes, in the corner of his eye. And on the bottom of his nose. Now, because he's um, a 
more or less it's kind of biting his lip um, that's going to be fairly bright colored but remember the shape of your mouth it's rounded it's kind of like a ball right here so we're going to have a fair amount of dark right here where those lines are just a bit and maybe where those dimples are put a little bit there under his chin and just a little bit up where his cheeks are you can put some in there And his little mouth, I'm going to just put some in there. And we'll darken it with more. Um, right along there, him a bit. Now, depending on the shadow, will depend on uh, if the shadow's coming down this way. It's going to be a little bit more shadow on his nose right here. And on the sides of his face. So I'll put a little bit there. This isn't going to be the same as a typical skull, so it's remember it's a rose hip. So it's going to be a little bit different as far as your shadowing. It's not going to have cheekbones, that type of thing, as much. Um, let's see. A little more dark. Line even darker in there. So I added more red to make it even darker. And in the center here it would be dark. Ah, I'm going to make this a little darker. And right under just a bit. In here. I should almost let that dry a little bit. Uh, let's see. Gonna, well, this will be underneath that bracket of. petal or leaf thing. That'll be darker in there. Um, let's see, was it like... Which way was it? I think it was like that. So I'm seeing this here much darker. And then I'm going to also put some pink in there. So this is kind of the underside of this bracket. And this will be dark in here. I'm going to make it even darker. More on the brown side. So 
so I can distinguish it between the face and the thing. bit darker in there. Okay, let's dry that. here. It's the underside. This is the side where the shadow would be. Between the eyes would be a little bit darker. shadow on this side of his neck.
a little dimple. And this needs to be a little bit darker in here. His eyebrows can be dark too. Let's do those. Now you could make just the base coat and use um, colored pencils to finish it off. It's up to you. I like using colored pencils along with the watercolor. I don't know, I just like it. Darker in there. Now let's do a little bit of pink. See there's pink in it. So more magenta I would say. Barely watered down. Just on the top here. It's more or less on the top these brackets. Okay, and then the brown that, darken it, kind of a little, I guess this is the stamens after they're dried up from the rose. Can do a few of his eyebrows lightly. Darken the nostril a little bit. Corners of the mouth is usually a little darker. I'm gonna put a little bit under here. See, this is when I always um, do a lot of touch-ups or increase the value because uh, watercolor dries lighter. But a lot of times you have to go back over and add some more 
um, contrast by adding a darker color. to the darkest areas anyways. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's fun to do. I like doing these funny things, characters. Got a little bit more bright green in there. You just play until you like it. I think he needs greenish pupils. Or not pupils. The white needs to be a little bit green. Not so white. Okay, let's dry that. Thanks, Michelle. You want to make sure your painting is really good and dry before you um, use any kind of pen or colored pencil. Alright, so now I've got my colored pencils beside me here. And... Play with the eyes a little. I love doing eyes. Um, I think I'm going to use a dark green. Let's see here. This is. marine green. Let's see if it's going to be... I don't think it's dark enough. Okay. What's this one? Peacock green. I don't know if that'll 
Nope. I don't like that. Mm, might have to go with brown then. Hmm. Nice dark brown. I'm just darkening the top part of his eyeball, mostly. And putting in just the darker area. Let's sharpen that. And then this crease in his top lid will be darker. Like that. And here. A darker. And then I'm just going to put a few um, little marks for his eyebrows. Just little tufts. And then under here where that leaf is, or bracket or whatever it is, I'm just going to darken that area a little bit more because it's right underneath so it would be a little darker. Just in the inside here where the antenna is coming out, It'll be a little darker. Okay, so I'll leave that one out. Let's get some bright green here. A little strawberry thief, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, chartreuse. Let's see how bright it is. Give that little ball of his nose a little more definition.
So it goes right over top of your um, watercolor really nicely. Just color this one side of his antenna a little bit darker. It might have to be darker than this though. Hmm. some white. Ball of the nose. A little bit on his eyelid here. on his upper lid or lip just a little bit and his lip his chin maybe his cheeks just a little bit of white just to smooth that in. Just gives it a little softer look to it. And maybe up his nose a little bit. And Part of his and I think I'm gonna put a little a few highlights in here and maybe on the top of the these need to be darkened or, let's see,
needed a little bit more dark. In here. On the one side, maybe. And in here. This, this dark, tough. It depends how you know fast you want to do these. You can really get all kinds of detail in them if you want. It's up to you. Pupil. And let's see. I'm going to add some more darkness, or should I do light? No, I need dark. I'm going to put a little bit of brown maybe on the one side here just to show just lightly just to show that it's shadowed a little bit it's kind of disappearing and then I'll put some white Okay, and it's a Posca. <laughs> Thanks, Dot. Yeah, he's full of mischief. Kathy, hi everyone. He's cute. I wonder what he's thinking about. <laughs> That's exactly what I want you to think. Give your drawing some kind of story. A little glisten in his eye. Then I'm going to put some highlight in here. Just so that that doesn't disappear. Okay. 
There is kind of a white edge to these brackets. So there he is, a little mischief maker. Now that could be a girl or a guy, it doesn't matter, but you know, you can make them however you want. Um, could put ears on them, I decided not to. It's fun. So basically from this, uh, can you show the reference photo from the book again? Yep. There's the reference, this guy. And there's the So he's not the exact same, but you don't, like I said, use it as a, a reference of how to draw, add an expression, basically. Brenda, thanks everybody. So just play, have some fun with it. <laughs> so we can do this. What time is it? Yep, I got enough time to probably do this. And like I said, um, this is more or less for the facial, but you can also. Um, do an emotion with body language too. So it's up to you what you want to do. If you're going to do a full body, even hands can suggest things. Um, really study pictures you see in magazines or books or even on TV. Start noticing how people um, use their body language or or expressions in TV. So you'll be quite surprised and it helps you when you start um, applying it to your own art. Well, this is the leaf green. I'm just gonna do the Basically, the leaves and the hips, the same color. And then I'll add a little bit of a blue-green to the leaves. They're darker. So 
I'll show you that in a minute. Even the, well, the stems are actually a burgundy color, so I could still paint them in green. I'm not too worried about that, but. Now, if you want to learn more about this type of um, character design, there are a lot of books out there, too. Um, actually, I have a really good one for more of a cartoon type of uh, drawing. I'll see if I can... I, I think I know where it is. I can dig it out for you. You're but these these books that I use are probably the best way of of uh, learning how to change up your stuff, like add. add real emotion to your paintings. It, it really makes a big difference. Oh darn. Okay. Um, these are basically So it will be darker. Now when paint is wet, another good way of making the little marks on the leaves is just take a pen or um, this needs to be smaller. Let's see. Here's a, and just coax the wet paint. Now this is harder to do on this paper because it's sketchbook paper, but you can do it on watercolor paper. Just adding a few different colors of green. You don't want to make them all the same, so just um, mix up a few colors and dab them in light, dark, and medium. Um, you can also put a little bit of blue in it. These rose leaves are kind of, they kind of have a, a cast of blue in them. And put some Payne's Gray with it. That usually works. And then we'll add a little bit of pen work. Just to um, show the differences. A bit shadowing in there. On here.
make some little marks along the edge of the petals. Normally I would just use a pencil if it was on uh, watercolor paper, but this works. Okay, so this, see how the, le the uh, stems are almost burgundy, so we're going to use some of that uh, alizarin crimson and mix some, a little bit of cerulean blue with it. And we'll just paint these guys. These are just quick sketches and paintings, more, more on the line of um, urban type of sketching, so it's not really high detail. It's just kind of a record, or just playing, basically, for me, um, staying creative. bit of a darker green. I can use this actually. Underneath the shadows. Not going to get too crazy. petals. You can put a little bit of green in the stems too, here and there, so you're not completely all burgundy. bit of that crimson on the tops, just on the very top of these brackets. Okay, so let's dry that up.
think a lot of those fairies are a little mischievous. So now I can go in, I think I'm just going to use my pen, where did I put it, I had a brown pen out here a minute ago. stolen my pen again. No bum. <laughs> oh, oh my. Did I put it in my pencil? No. they put it? Brown. Hmm. I wonder if I brought it upstairs. I could have. Oh well. It's this one. It's a three. Use the black, I guess. So I'm just going to put those fuzzy um, stamens on the top here, scribble. some of the shadowed areas of the um, I'm going to keep the same maybe some hash marks hash just to define it better it's not lost.
some shadows. Where the stems are. Sometimes I put the like this here, it's kind of disappearing in the leaf here, but it's supposed to be on top. So then I would put in the full stem just to show that that's where it is. Same with this here. Maybe a little bit of shading in it. And then these um, leaves can be, just indicate where the, the edge is. You don't have to do all zigzags, just some one side of the serrated edge looks good. Maybe a vein in it. And these are a little obscure. I'm just going to a few this one here I might put a few of the um, side veins in. It's up to you just to indicate which way the um, leaf is falling. We're almost done. Doesn't take long if you're just, you know, more or less sketching for documenting your in your journal or just sketching because you want to sketch. Doesn't have to take a long, long time. 
you just want to start off with doing this type of, of um, work, just have fun with it. It's, make it more of an experiment than a finished piece. Um, that way, it's something you're learning from instead of having something, say, you want to sell or you're going to display somewhere. If it's drawn for learning purposes, you'll find it much easier to do stuff in your journal. I guess she's scared of poems. Yes, different stories. I guess we all have uh, fairy tales that we remember. My mom and dad ever read to us, unfortunately. But they were very busy working. Both of them worked. My mom was a nurse. She worked nights. My dad was, started out as a plumber. So we did get a lot of... Uh, bedtime stories. Actually, my sisters, my two older sisters, they were eight years older. They basically <laughs> took care of us. So the way they w it was done back then. Alright. I think she, he's done, or she, whoever you want to name it. See, today is the 11, 9, 21. A non-binary, there you go. <laughs> yep. Here it is. I'm going to look around my garden shed now when I go out there and make sure. He... <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he's a little rascal, this one. <laughs> but give it a try. And, and just experiment. That's the, and if you really want to do this, you have to do it. You have to experiment. You have to practice. So get a book you're not like really really paid a lot of money for and just this is a seven dollar michael's book now thanks lena <laughs> yours is great too <laughs> just play play and see what you can dream up and and don't put limits there's there's no limits um, when you start putting limits on well people don't really have that or that doesn't make sense then you stop you stop your imagination from exploring so just put doesn't matter how crazy it may sound put it down on paper and see what you can do with it well, you're welcome guys I hope you'll give it a try and if you do um, take me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. I'm on all of them, all as Kathy Arbor. So I'd love to see what you do. And leave a comment below if there's anything else you want me to try <laughs> and dream up. 
because it's fun. I really enjoy doing these. They're a lot of fun. So get out your sketchbooks and just practice. Have some fun with it. Don't worry, it's just you seeing it. So I'll see you all on Thursday and have a fantastic evening, everyone. Bye for now.